Good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thanks for watching my prior videos and supporting the channel. Today, we are going to talk about very interesting topic about the cloud data warehousing solution. Earlier, we talked about the traditional warehouse shifting into AWS cloud ecosystem. And this video is specifically about moving into Microsoft Azure cloud platform. I won't ignore this diagram or the framework because this is the key. You need to have this basic understanding about the data warehousing. If you haven't watched my earlier video about the data warehousing overview, I'm giving you a link in the bow. Please take a look at it and it will really help you to have a deeper understanding about the basic functionality of data warehousing. So now you have data warehousing environment locally. We call this a traditional platform and see how we are going to take this architecture or framework into the Microsoft ecosystem. This is the Cortana analytical suite. Uh, basically, like uh, after you move your traditional data warehouse, you know, how it brings up um, your detail augmentation about your the warehousing footprint when it runs on the cloud ecosystem, there are a bunch of other capabilities were naturally inherited, uh, which we'll be going to see it in a very short video. Let's take a look at the video. The US healthcare system is challenged by the task to deliver exceptional personalized care at a lower cost. Despite spending nearly one fifth of our gross domestic product on healthcare, we struggle to meet this goal. Financial pressures on care providers are increasing. This isn't sustainable. So how can we deliver high quality, personalized care that patients deserve given the cost pressures we face? At Dartmouth-Hitchcock, we've created Imagine Care, a new cloud-based solution built on Cortana Analytics Suite and Microsoft Dynamics that enables providers to help patients achieve better health. With the help of Microsoft, Dartmouth-Hitchcock is building a technology platform to serve healthcare organizations and patients across the country, setting a new standard for personalized care. Now, using machine intelligence, providers can develop a care plan that's unique to each patient. We can monitor patients from their homes, where data is collected from devices and sent to the cloud, to Imagine Care's 24-7 contact center, where registered nurses continually monitor a patient's health status and potentially serious trends. Cortana, summarize health status for Ben Andrews. Ben Andrews' weight has increased more than two pounds in the last 24 hours. Please review the home diuresis protocol prescribed by Dr. Phillips. Patients get reminders and encouragement and dynamic updates to their care plans, improving their health, helping them avoid unnecessary trips to the emergency room, and reducing the cost of care. With support from loved ones and real-time interventions, there is less likelihood of readmission. With Cortana Analytics Suite and Microsoft Dynamics, we're transforming the way healthcare is delivered today, improving patient outcomes, reducing costs, and offering an unprecedented level of personalized care. Wow. Hope you enjoyed that video. Let's continue with our session. This is the architecture. We call this a reference architecture on how we can lift and shift the current uh, traditional data warehouse environment into the Microsoft Azure. What you see here on the right hand side is in, uh, is in Microsoft Cloud Ecosystem, which is a SQL data warehouse. Uh, currently, uh, it is called dedicated SQL pool which are part of uh, Synapse uh, SQL architectural components. It has a bunch of um, you know, options or uh, functionalities involved because the SQL data warehouse uses a node-based architecture. What you see here, the small little bucket-like structure, uh, they are like a node-based architecture. Application connect and issue P SQL commands to the control node. And uh, basically any, any SQL the SQL developer tool set that you use, it's the same thing. Like uh, you connect and it connects to the, C the control node. The control node hosts the distributed query engine, which uh, 
optimizes the queries for parallel processing, then passes the operation to the compute nodes. What you see here in the, in, in the downstairs, it's basically it distribute the queries and so that the compute node would perform the operations in parallel. Compute nodes store all the user data in Azure storage and run the parallel queries. The data movement service we call it as a DMS. It's a very important piece that we will be uh, seeing it in the upcoming slides. It's a system level internal service that moves the data across the nodes as necessary to run queries in parallel and return accurate results. And what you see here on the, the bottom section is the Azure storage. Uh, we used to call this a blob storage using WASB. Um, the SQL data warehouse, uh, current name is dedicated SQL pool, uh, leverages Azure storage to keep your data in safe. Um, since your data is stored and managed by Azure storage, there is a separate charge for your storage consumption. Keep that in mind in, in quote. The data is shared in, in distributions to optimize the performance of the system. You can choose with uh, shredding pattern to use the distribution um, like a hash algorithm or round robin or replicate you know the control node is the brain of the architecture right um, because it is the front end that interacts with all your applications and connections and the distributed query engine runs on the control node to optimize and coordinate the parallel queries when you submit a t sql query the control node transforms it to queries that run against each distributions in parallel on the other hand, the compute nodes uh, provide the computational power, a distribution map to the compute nodes for processing. As you pay for more compute resources, uh, distributions are remapped to the available compute nodes. For example, if you have four, the distribution will be sent to the all, all the four nodes. If you have 16, the same way. The number of compute node ranges from one to 60. This is a very important number and is determined by the service level uh, for SNAP SQL. Each compute node has a node ID, which is a unique identifier, is visible in system views. Uh, you can see the compute node ID by looking uh, for the node ID column in the system views. Uh, so that way you could be able to manage the, the, the performance or even what's really going on in each compute node. The data movement service, on the other hand, is uh, data transport technologies that coordinates the data movement between the compute nodes. Uh, some queries require you know, uh, data movements to ensure parallel queries return accurate results. When data movement is required, uh, DMS ensures the right data gets into the location. On the other hand, the distribution is a key. It's a basic unit of storage and processing for parallel queries that run on distributed data. When SNAP SQL runs a query, the work is divided into 60 smaller queries that run in parallel, assuming that you have 60 uh, distribution nodes. But right now here it is four, so it will be split into four different qu smaller queries that run in parallel. Um, so that's basically this architecture is about, um, but in, in the same time that round robin technology is, is a kind of a distribution algorithm. Um, when, when a control node gives a command to the compute nodes, um, it could dispatch the queries in a round robin fashion. Uh, round robin table is the simplest table to create and delivers the fast performance when used as a staging table for the loads. Uh, it is for the distributor tables, distributes the data evenly across the table, but without any further optimization. So it is just a point to be noted. And let's advance to the next uh, uh, next slide. Um, so. Uh, advantages of the SQL data warehouse um, is basically like, uh, you know, it's so important that the ease of use. It is extremely uh, easy to handle the whole architecture. Um, flexibility standpoint, as I stated earlier, depending upon your uh, number of records or the volume of records that, that is inbound uh, to the control node, you could scale out the environment from one to 60 nodes or instantaneously, depending upon the, the contract that you have with the Microsoft. So that is, that we call as elasticity. Um, so it, it is so flexible 
to perform the scalability options on the fly. You won't even, you won't even notice that that operation, how would the system, the architecture is scaling out. That is purely depending upon the control node and and it is it, it ensures that oh the volume of records is like now several GB or several TB and depending upon that the compute nodes will be engaged. Price point, as we stated earlier, uh, price is a unique subject. Just I will post a comment or the 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 link here uh, in terms of the pricing point is extremely um, you know manageable in terms that when to uh, minimize your load, when you have a lower load, you could minimize the price. It's all set dynamically. You could you could do based on the elasticity uh, configuration in your Azure console, and that's basically is. And um, the other advantages of SQL Data Warehouse is the control node. It is which we talked about that in detail. Like it, it performs the query execution plan, uh, performs the parallelism to the compute nodes, and also does the optimization. Right, depending upon the availability, depending upon the uh, the volume of records that it comes in from from the uh, from the client machine. It's so all depending upon that. The compute node is basically like a worker node. It performs the local processing. And once the performance, once the data operation is done, it, then it reports the data, the result sets back to the control node, then the control node would consolidate the results and send the report back to the, uh, the query operators. Um, then it's so basically the important piece here, the Azure storage, we, we used to call this a blob storage. Let's see what it is. It is storing the large amount of unstructured data. In RDBMS environment, is a relational uh, database management system. It's a little bit different. The the it's not only stores the structural data, uh, similar to uh, uh, you know, unlike the RDBMS environment, it does store both st structured and unstructured data, and also you know, the unstructured data such as the images, like binary data that can be accessed from anywhere, from from uh, from any websites or or you know, yeah, third party APIs. Um, it can also expose the data publicly to the world, depending upon the security system that you have. The common uses, uses of the Azure or the blob storage include, it serves um, images or documents directly to the browser, and store files for distributed access, uh, streaming the video and audio. Extremely scalable, which is not feasible on a traditional warehouse environment. That all the beauty of moving stuff back into the cloud ecosystem, which could perform all this kind of scenario. Even for the traditional vehicles, you could still do it, but it's extremely complex to do it. And here it is very simple to do so uh, because there are a lot of best practices around and the architecture is in, in such a way that it, it helps you to perform all the streaming operations on the fly. Storing the data for backup and restore disaster recovery and archiving, it all helps you configure it. It performs the operation on the fly. You don't have to manage the environment the way you used to manage through the DBAs in Oracle or the SQL Server DBAs. It's all automatic. It's, would say uh, more than automatic scenario. So you configure it once and it does by itself when it's a notification, when it's done, when when there is a need for a restoration process. Um, and extremely scalable as well. Storing data for analysis by an on-premise or so, a sure hosted service, like uh, which we talk about in upcoming scenarios, is more like for analysis purpose. This is architecture. So let's say how DMS, uh, performs this operation because you must need to s move the data from your uh, your traditional warehouse. You build this the architecture now. The structure of the tables, schemas, data, everything needs to be uh, moved using the DMS operation. And the the da Azure Data Migration Service is one of a uh, you know beauty of moving data um, because. Uh, it is a tool that helps you to simplify, guide, automate your database migration to Azure. Uh, it uh, easily migrate your data schema and objects from multiple sources, uh, homogeneous, non-homogeneous, and, and to the cloud ecosystem at a scale that you want. Um, the first one, it supports the Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Postgre, Ma MongoDB, uh, Oracle uh, migration to Azure from on-prem to other clouds. And this is uh, basically easy to understand the process, helps to get the job done right uh, from the beginning of, of the operation. And database sensitive migration moves data, schema objects to Azure, and also it is extremely resilient and self-healing migration process. Now, if there is a process, 
it's failed during the during the middle of the migration process the system it automatically just in the job it, you don't have to do it it you all you need to do is just to take a look at the status of the migration process that's the beauty of this and also uh, it is uh, uh, i would say um the migration process is so automatic it saves time and effort by automating your move to assure with powershell uh, database migration service work with powershell command and to automatically migrate to the list of databases that you want it in, in, in sim simplify your migration process because your traditional data warehouse environment needs to be shifted and lifted back into the azure ecosystem microsoft ecosystem provide all the tool sets for you to enable and empower your uh, data warehousing environment on the fly directly back into the Azure ecosystem. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. If you do like the video, let me know what you think about this video. Uh, please share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.